a fair bit going on at the moment. We have, of course, the Saturday attack and then last night what is confirmed to be a terror attack at a church, both happening in Sydney. My panel, former Labor Senator Stephen Conroy and former Victorian Liberal Party President Michael Kroger join me live now. It's a, it's a pretty um, intemperate time out there. Michael, just starting with you, you know, police and authorities being pretty cautious. I guess the concern is now uh, this was a terror attack last time and whether it becomes a case of retaliation. And it's a time for a Prime Minister to, um, you know, not speculate. He's tr trying to uh, urge Australians to stick together right now. Well, he is, which is what any, you know, decent Western leader does at this time. Um, the question arises, Tom, as to whether there's an increased level of religious intolerance in this country. Uh, what is the reason for that and uh, what can be done about it? If you read between the lines from what is being said, it looks as if this was a response by someone of one faith against someone of another faith who may have, some, who may have said something uh, untoward uh, about the first faith. So uh, that's what it looks like. Now, maybe that'll be disproved, but at the minute, that's what this sounds like. And um, it's that type of religious intolerance that uh, this country is not known for. Mm. Yeah, and that's what we've pleasingly had for the vast majority um, in Australia. Stephen, you know, I suppose the war in Gaza always had that, that possibility and without sort of wading into everything on that, we have had before this bishop actually express a lot of sympathy for the plight of Palestinians. Yeah, look, this is very disappointing. Uh, we've, you know, I want to echo Michael's comments. I think, you know, Prime Minister's, you know, taking the right approach. Chris Mims has continued to play a blinder on all of these issues. Uh, and I think they're both showing, you know, leadership and maturity. Uh, it is disappointing to see that uh, the degree of racial intolerance at the moment. Uh, and I would hope that the messages from the leadership of both the churches of all faiths, the Prime Minister and political leadership across the country gets out there very strongly that now is the time for uh, calmness. And now is not the time for any degree of retribution or retaliation. And then we can begin to have a further discussion. I would hope some of the people who are engaged in protests around the country would uh, also want to just turn the temperature down at the moment. Uh, it's not a good time to be inflaming these arguments. Uh, people are raw. People are dying on both sides of the border uh, in the Middle East. We've had Iran launch a significant strike on Israel. We've got possible Israel Israeli retaliation being discussed. Now is not a good time to be inflaming and seeking to score points of any sort, religious, political or any sort, uh, in this country. We've got this supermarket inquiry going on at the moment. It's been a fiery one, Michael. I'm not sure if you caught up. We've been playing Brad Banducci. Get into a bit of... Look, it might sound like semantics, the argument with the chair, Nick McKim. Uh, Brad Banducci wants to talk about return on investment. Return on equity is a preferred measure from Nick McKim. But we're diving into the weeds, but this is what we're trying to figure out, I guess. Supermarkets, uh, you know, are they making an unreasonable amount of money or not? And there's, there's no definitive answer, but you've got to sort of try to compare it to other rates of return around the world. Yeah, you do. Um, uh, at a first step, uh, as I've said, I think you want to work out what the returns to growers are and where, where, where the margins are on the, along the profit chain. Uh, given that we're getting into the weeds of this debate, as they have with petrol prices over the thousand inquiries into petrol pricing we've had over the last couple of decades, uh, let's see where the margins are. Now, some of that's commercial in confidence, but I think it's fair to say that the growers seem to be receiving a, a very small proportion of, of the ultimate retail price for their, uh, for their hard labour. Uh, and so let's see where the profit margins are. Um, having said that, um, this clown show of uh, McKim threatening to put uh, 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 Mr Banducci in jail and threatening with contempt, what, what, what a preposterous piece of nonsense that was, um, um, you know, seriously. And uh, uh, it's why the Greens should have no place in anything to do with business in this country. The, the, this was just a stunt by McKim and uh, shame on him. I mean... 
you know, pretending that, that to, to be a senator of the Australian Parliament, that he's got a right to sort of threaten Mr Banducci in this way, um, you know, shame, shame on him and shame on the Greens. I can't see it happening. Uh, look, I'm always on the side of well, why, the why even raise it? Why even that. raise it, Tom? Why even <laughs> raise it? I mean, this, is yeah. a, this was a stunt to get the attention of Sky News and therefore hundreds of thousands of viewers across the country will be on the nightly news tonight. Um, what a what a cheap exercise in politics by the Greens. Um, but, um, you know, it, it takes a break from their anti-Semitism, I suppose. Well, Kroger sitting on the fence there as usual. Stephen, now I know you've uh, got your usual declara declaration to make. You, your, part of your work means you do work with Woolworths. Let me ask you a general one on this because... Uh, facts matter, right? And this is this is why I think this will be interesting around drilling down to various figures and so on, because the vibe is supermarkets, uh, uh, you know, making crazy amounts of money. We What we know is we've got a highly concentrated market. What we don't know is what that's delivering. So anything that shines light on that um, is, is fair enough, as long as we're sticking to the facts here. Yeah, look, I think... Uh, and obviously, as you, you said, thank you for that, that I, I currently do, do some consulting work for Woolworths. Uh, so I was uh, watching closely this morning. Uh, and uh, I would think that a lot of the information provided today was very useful to the committee. I think the committee shone a light uh, on a lot of dark corners. A lot of uh, Australians are hurting and a lot of Australians want some answers. So I think the role of the committee has been very good. Uh, one of the things that John Faulkner taught me in my 20 years in the Senate in my first year or two is uh, there is a point where you do have to understand that the Senate actually has a limited amount of powers. And, you know, when you want to go uh, to call the bluff of witnesses, you need to understand that you are an emperor wearing no clothes. Uh, there is no jail cell in the parliament. There is no ability to force someone to answer a question the way you want. Many times uh, in, the, in the Senate and in the House of Representatives, you'll hear someone in the opposition stand up and say to the Speaker or the President, the Prime Minister is not answering my question. And the standard response is, I have no power to direct the Prime Minister how to answer a question. I can make him address the question. Uh, so there is some theatre in Parliament. Uh, and I thought uh, we saw some you know, healthy theatre today, but in terms of the actual ability to jail somebody, uh, I think uh, uh, that was that was that was in the theatre category. Uh, but to your core point, uh, the, there is a lot of good information coming from this committee. It is doing a good job in general, and I thought some of the answers across the last few weeks of hearings have been really helpful. And hopefully, the committee are able to find a balanced report, which looks at all of the evidence. Yeah, well, with the threat made, I thought it was uh, law and order. The senator's edition was about to begin, <laughs> but apparently not. Apparently not. I'm not sure it would rate all that highly. You never know. Michael, Stephen, always appreciate your thoughts. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Good to talk.